PowerPoint. We're going to go over some background information on sovereign view. We'll go through transitional transformational theory, trait theory, behavioral theory, situational theory, methods of his influence, and we'll cover the Bino D model of our leadership. Background information. Sergeant Major Theo's branch is infantry. The MOSS he holds is 11 Bravo, that's infantrymen, 11 Charlie, which is uh, an infantry mortarman, and 11 Zulu, which is a senior infantry NCO. Uh, he attended basic training in the IT of Fort Benning, Georgia, and his unit was headquarters, headquarters company, uh, 1st Battalion, 100 So transformational and transactional leadership. <clears throat> Command Sergeant Major Peter Geode's leadership is mostly transformational. He recognizes that when you join the Army, there is some level of expectation that it will be transactional. That's like the <clears throat> basic component of, of the Army. You're told to do something and you do it. But he strived to maintain a transformational leadership uh, style with the soldiers. This is one of his quotes. It was always better to overtly demonstrate confidence in tactics, techniques, and procedures, successfully lead from the lead from the front, demonstrate physical courage and strength, earning a high PP score, and endure what your soldiers endure, sharing provision, in order to successfully lead them. So, like the basis of transformational leadership is, is you're, you're in the field with them, you're showing them that you're doing the same stuff that they do. Um, a stereotype of the infantry is that it sucks. So your soldiers don't want to see you, you know, sitting in the Humvee while they're all out crawling in the mud. You gotta be in the mud with them. And that's what he's saying here. When you do things with them, when you develop them personally, when you teach them, you develop transformational leadership, and that's when you guys want to follow you. What traits did he possess? He possesses a strong body. It's not prone to injury. He enjoys outdoor activities that are similar to military activities like backpacking, map reading, land navigation, shooting, running, stuff like that. The build, physical endurance, mental endurance, um, overall the parallel infantry. The infantry basic job. Um, learning these skills allowed him to like, have an idea of what to expect from the area. Not only one of his quotes, having a good idea of what to expect allows you to share knowledge to help others survive endure and succeed. You can't have transformational leadership if you do not know what you're telling you guys. If you guys have this understanding that you have no clue what you're talking about, they're not gonna wanna follow you because they're gonna know that you have no clue what you're talking about. So it's important that, at least in his leadership style, that he had prior experience with all these traits so that he could teach his guys properly what they were supposed to be doing. What behaviors did he possess? He was confident and caring. Um, your soldiers would want to know that you care for them. They want to know that they're not just a tool used to get a job done. Um, this is another one of his quotes. Both traits, competent and caring, take time to master. Um, he shared this quote with me in the words of General Eric Shinzeki, who was, uh, he was a Joint Chief of Staff under President Barack Obama, I think for his first term. You must love those you lead before you can be an effective leader. You can certainly command them without that sense of commitment, but you cannot lead without it. So you can tell your guys what to do all day long. That doesn't mean that they're going to love you as a leader. If you show competency and caring and you trust them and they know that, then they'll follow you anywhere. Just a picture of him with some of his guys. That was their first appearance to Afghanistan. your right, his left. What situational factors dictate leadership changes? I focused on a deployment. A deployment typically means you will either be leading a new set of soldiers or having new soldiers in the element you are leading. You may have to move from transactional to transformational leadership um, styles depending on your soldiers' experience with you. So, so all military leadership starts out as transactional because your soldiers don't have um, they don't have any experience with you, they don't really know who you are when you start off as a second lieutenant, that's what your leadership is going to be like. 
And from there, you build on that to a transformational style of leadership. Um, for deployment, for my dad's first deployment, for example, his job was to train um, the Afghan National Army. So he went into that situation not being able to speak Afghani. He had to talk through a translator. Um, he didn't even know those guys. Totally different culture, totally different morals and values. Um, the Afghanis really take a lot and they don't give a lot back. So he had to work around all that. He had to show them that he trusted them, even though that was difficult at times because some of them were corrupt. And eventually, I mean, after months and months, they started being trusted him and his leadership style changed from him telling them what to do to him showing them or asking them to do something and they would do it themselves. Methods of influence. So Sergeant Major Gio uses the infantry's motto, follow me, to lead his soldiers. One of his quotes, not being afraid to demonstrate confidence in every soldier's common task in front of soldiers. If you need infantry company first sergeant, who is the fastest dis to disassemble an M240 Bravo in the company is one way to move your soldiers in the direction that you want them to go. So leading from the front is one way to build transformational leadership. Your soldiers, again, want to know that you know what you're telling them to do. Not only do they want you to know what you're telling them to do, but they want you to be a master of it because it doesn't make any sense for you to teach your guys a job unless you have already mastered it. Otherwise, you're not teaching it to the best of your ability and someone else should be doing it. So the Army Be No Do model, um, like the basic model of what Army leaders should be. So Army HDA demonstrates all of these qualities in various aspects. A couple of them, he demonstrates the B with his military bearing. Physically fit, he's confident, and he's caring. No, he possesses mental agility, field craft, and 27 years of, of military experience in the infantry. And then his Duke, he leads by example, he cares for his soldiers, he communicates with those that are higher and lower um, on the chain of command, and he gets results. This concludes my brief.